Today we're smoking a Snake River Farms American Kurobudo ham and we're doing it all on the slow and sear kettle. I'm Johnny, this is View to a Grill. The first thing we need to do is set up our slow and sear kettle. I like a clean grill. Let's go ahead, use our citrus safe to clean our grill. All we have to do is spray on some citrus safe, let it sit for a minute and then scrub it off. And I also like to use a towel to wipe off the grime. I'll fill the slow and sear about three quarters full. We can go ahead, get our fire starter lit. And on top of that, I'm gonna place a full Weber chimney starter of lump charcoal. Once our lump charcoal has started to ash over on the top, we can then take that and fill up that little space we reserved in our slow and sear basket. You can then take your favorite flavor of wood and just throw one chunk right on top of the fire. I'm gonna go ahead and preset the top vent to about half and the bottom vent just to the right of the X on the left. Also note that the smoke hole is closed. Now that our slow and sear kettle is all set up, we're just gonna let that preheat for about 10 to 15 minutes. While the slow and sear kettle is preheating, let's prepare our American Kurabuda ham. Today, I'll be using the Snake River Farms American Kurabuda ham. This one is a little over five and a half pounds and will feed about eight people. Here I'm going to use my chef's knife to score the outside of the ham about a quarter of an inch deep. Also at this time if you want to apply rub go ahead and do that now. For me this ham does not need any rub. All of the additional flavor is going to come from the glaze. Now that the ham is ready let's set up our cook. The wireless probe thermometer I'll be using today is the Inkbird INT11PB. To set it up, all you have to do is open the app and select the cooking icon. Next, select pork. I'm gonna use the slide and slide it over to medium rare and then touch complete. And that's all you need to do. Our cook is set. I'm gonna take the probe and try to get it as close to the middle of the ham as I possibly can. Once I have the probe plugged in, I'll then get the ham and put it on the indirect side of the slow and sear kettle. One thing I want you to notice is that I have this ham on a rack and pan. I'll add some water to the pan for two reasons. First, it'll promote moisture in the slow and sear kettle, and second, it makes cleanup easier. Now all we have to do is close the lid and monitor the temperature of the ham. While the ham is warming up, let's prepare the honey, lemon, and ginger glaze. For the glaze, let's get a half a cup of butter, a half a cup of brown sugar, and a half a cup of honey. We'll go ahead and get all of those into a saucepan. And then I'm gonna zest some lemon right into the saucepan. I'll also take half of that lemon and squeeze the juice into the saucepan as well. Now I'll just add a pinch of kosher salt and last I'll prepare my ginger. I'll just cut a few fingers off, slice them in half, and throw them right into the saucepan. Now I'm just waiting for the internal temperature of the ham to get about 80 degrees. And that's when I'm gonna go ahead and start heating up the sauce in the slow and sear kettle. We have our sauce coming together in the saucepan. And when we get to about 100 degrees of internal temperature, it'll be time to glaze our Snake River Farms Kurabuda ham. As you can see here, we've reached 100 degrees of internal temperature. We'll go ahead and apply our first layer of glaze. And let's take a look at what we got. Check out that ham. It is coming along perfectly. I'll just give that glaze a quick stir. And now that all the ingredients are combined, I'll just use my brush and glaze right over the entire ham. I'll then remove the glaze from the slow and sear kettle and close the lid. At this time, I wanna generate just a little bit more heat. So I'm going to slightly open bottom vent. At 110 degrees of internal temperature, we're going to apply our second layer of glaze. Again, we're just going to drizzle that glaze over the entire ham. Also, take a look at the color. We can see some really nice caramelization going on with the ham. Also, I want you to notice that the side of the ham facing the fire is getting the most caramelization. So 
All you have to do to make sure that the ham is evenly colored is spin the ham around so that the other side can get some nice color as well. Now just close the lid and let this go until it gets to about 120 degrees of internal temperature. You guessed it, it's going to be time to glaze our ham again. Same process, just drizzle your glaze right over the entire ham. And then at 130 degrees, we're going to apply a generous coating of our honey, lemon, and ginger glaze. One more application of our glaze, and that occurs at 140 degrees of internal temperature. We'll get the lid open. Take a look at this thing. This thing is looking fantastic and almost glorious. Let's go and get our last coating of glaze on, close the lid, and then once we get to our 145 degree temperature, well, it'll be time to take this ham off. Now, if you'd like one of these Snake River Farm Kurobudo hams for yourself, check out the link below. Now here we are, we have arrived at my favorite part of the video. It is the taste test. Our ham is done, it's beautiful. Let's take it off and set it on our board. And then there it is, take a close look. We have nice caramelization on the top, nice caramelization on all the sides. So let's get this thermometer pulled out so we can slice it up. Since this is a boneless ham, I'm gonna slice it right down the center. And now I'll give you the cross section and you can see how beautifully pink this is on the inside. Now we can go ahead, take some slices, and let me give you a closer look. Look how juicy this ham is, totally over the top. And what does it taste like? Well, <laughs> it tastes, it tastes pretty damn good. So I love my store-bought spiral sliced hams. I absolutely do love those hams. If you really want something special for your holiday, this is the way to go. This ham is just so delicious that, well, I'm gonna have to order one for myself this Christmas. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead, subscribe to my channel. You don't wanna miss any future episodes. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, y'all.